All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the things that you need to know for the test. You should be doing all of these worksheets on your own so you make sure you know how to do it. So let's review our types of reactions first. We have synthesis, we have decomposition, we have combustion, single displacement, and double displacement. Double displacement, you may be asked questions about, are you forming a solid or are you forming water? If you're forming a solid, it's a precipitation reaction. If you're forming water, it is an acid-base neutralization. If you're not forming any of those, the answer is going to be there's no reaction. So how we decide whether we're forming a precipitate is with that solubility table. So in your pink packet, everybody find your solubility table and make sure you can locate that when you're asked questions about precipitates. Our first one has compound plus compound yields compound plus compound. Therefore, you're going to classify this as double displacement. Or double replacement. Now we're going to use our solubility table to figure out what the state of matter of these are. How it's going to go on the test, there's going to be seven reactions. You're on those seven reactions that you are balancing, you're already going to be given the state of matter. But there are going to be a couple questions about which ones would form a precipitate. So how you would do this is remember that your cations are on the left-hand side. Run your finger down to magnesium. Your anions are on across the top. Run your finger over to carbonate. What state of matter do you see there? It's going to be a solid. Lithium chloride, you find lithium on the left-hand side. Run your finger over to chloride. It's going to have big S meaning that this particular compound is aqueous. So I'm going to balance this by inspection because you will see that we have magnesiums, we have chlorides, we have lithiums, we have carbonates. On the reactant side, we have one magnesium. On the product side, we have one magnesium. Reactant side, we have one carbonate. Product side, we have one carbonate. But when it comes to lithium and chloride, we have two lithiums and two chlorides on the reactant side. So if I put a two here, I'm balanced. So, so far I know this is a double displacement reaction that does occur because it produces a solid, so it's a precipitation reaction. My coefficients for my compounds are one for magnesium chloride, one for lithium carbonate, one for magnesium carbonate, and two for lithium chloride. Now let's go through our driving forces. Remember we had the acronym GRUES. Let's test each one of these individually, and this is what I suggest you do on the test. So for every equation, ask yourself, first of all, gas. If we form a gas, we will have more moles of gas on the products than we have on the reactants. Well, there are zero moles of gas on the products and zero moles of gas on the reactants. So this particular one is not gas. Next question we ask ourselves is, is it redox? Well, you have to have somebody standing by themselves on one side and in a compound on the other side. Also, double displacement reactions are never redox, so we're going to say no. Formation of water, it would have H2O on the product side. does not have H2O on the product side, so it is not formation of water. Last one is 
you have to have AQ, AQ, and a double displacement reaction on the reactant side, and then a solid on the product side, and that is the case. So my only driving force for this particular reaction is going to be formation of a solid. So the double displacement reaction and solid formation of a solid is going to be our only driving force. This is a combustion reaction because O2 is a reactant. Let's go through balancing this individually because this seemed to be hard for people is the balancing of the combustion reactions. So in this case, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. On the reactant side, we have 6, 12, and 2. Remember on the product side, it's always 1, 2, 3. So I'm going to balance my carbons first by putting a 6 here. That gives me 6 carbons, but it also changes my oxygen, gives me 12 plus 1, 13 oxygens. Next thing I'll do is put a six here to balance my hydrogens. That gives me 12 hydrogens, but it also changes my oxygen. So I have 12 plus six or 18. Now I go to the other side. In order to get 18 from O2, I would put a nine here. Now I'm balanced. Combustion reactions are always going to have the same driving forces. Let's go through them individually. On the reactant side, we have 1 plus 9 or 10 moles of gas on the reactant side. On the product side, we have 6 plus 6 or 12 moles of gas on the product side. There's more moles of gas on the product side, so formation of a gas is a driving force usually will be for combustion reactions. Next one is redox. Well, you have oxygen by itself here. When it's elemental oxygen, its oxygen oxidation state is zero. And he's in a compound over here in both places, so he's minus two. Combustion reactions are always redox. You can tell that because it's elemental on one side and in a compound on the other side. So redox is also a driving force for this reaction. The exchange of electrons is driving this for reaction to happen. And believe it or not, you guys love exchange of electrons reactions. That's how you charge your cell phone. So somebody learned a lot about chemistry, figured out battery science, and that's how you get to use a cell phone every waking minute of your day. So believe it or not, you guys are chemists all day, every day. So anytime anybody says, I don't like chemistry, well, you're doing it all day. So if you don't like it, you at least better appreciate the fact that somebody else did, right? Or you wouldn't have cell phones, texting, Snapchat, um, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Netflix, you wouldn't have any of that stuff if somebody didn't take the time to learn chemistry. All right, so this is a uh, combustion reaction is gas and redox. Next one is water. Well, I've got H2O as a product, so water is a driving force. Last one is formation of a solid. Combustion reactions are never formation of a solid. That's only for double displacement reactions. So you're only going to use this for double displacement reactions. This also seemed to be confusing because look, we have one calcium, one calcium, one carbon, one carbon, three oxygens, one plus two, three oxygens. So this is one you would write balanced by. So the coefficient for calcium carbonate is one. The coefficient for calcium oxide is one. The coefficient for carbon dioxide is one. It is. It has one reactant, so we know that one reactant, all it can do is fall apart or decompose. So this is a decomposition reaction. Let's go through our individual driving forces. Formation of a gas. So our first driving force is formation of a gas, carbon dioxide at standard conditions is always a gas. So we have zero moles of gas on the reactant. 
and one mole of gas on the product. So formation of a gas is a driving force. Everybody's in the compound on the reactant side. Everybody's in the compound on the product side. So it is not redox. H2O, we don't form H2O. So it is not formation of water. And solid is only for double displacement reactions. So this is a decomposition reaction that's already balanced and has formation of gas as the driving force. Let's go to the next one. I'm going to balance it by saying this balances phosphorus, this balances oxygen. We have one product. That means they're being put together or synthesized. So this is a synthesis reaction. Let's go through our driving forces. There's no gas on the products at all, so it's not formation of a gas. Redox, we've got elements by themselves on the reactants and then in compounds on the products, so it is redox. There's no water on the product side and it is not a double displacement reaction, so it is a synthesis reaction the coefficients are 1, 3, 2, and redox is the only driving force. Let's go to the next one and glance real quick at our activity series. Remember the activity series, which is right underneath your solubility table. Everybody wants to be part of a compound. So right now, copper is standing by itself. In order for copper to be able to kick silver out, remember cations only kick cations out, anions only kick anions out. In order for him to be able to kick silver out, copper has to be more active, has to be above him on the activity series. Is copper more reactive than silver? Is copper above silver on the activity series? It is. So you're going to say this reaction does happen. This is a single displacement reaction or a single replacement, however you like better. Single displacement reactions only happen when the element standing by himself is more active. Let's go through our driving forces. There's no gas on either side, so it's obviously not gas. Redox. Double, uh, single displacement reactions are always redox because these guys are zero by themselves. And in a compound, they're not zero. So it is redox. We don't form water. And it's not a double displacement reaction, so it can't be solid. This is a single displacement reaction, and redox is the only driving force. We'll go back up and balance this. Um, two nitrates balanced with silver. The coefficients are 2, 1, 1, 2. I did quite a few combustions with this because that seemed to be the most confusing. I think we're pretty good at identifying combustion though, right? Oxygen is a reactant. So this is combustion of a hydrocarbon. CHO. I have three, six, and don't forget there's two different places oxygen occurs. And I have one, two, three as always. I'm going to balance carbon first. That changes carbon and oxygen. Then I'll balance water. Now carbon and hydrogen are balanced. And this changes oxygen also, so we have nine. Let's go to this side. You need nine on this side also. You have one here, so you need to have eight come from here. So we'll put a four there and that balances us. So the coefficients are one, four, three, three. Let's check our 
driving forces. I have five moles of gas in the reactant and six moles of gas in the product. So formation of a gas is a driving force. Combustions are always redox because elemental oxygen changes to oxygen in a compound. So the oxidation number changes. It's always redox. Combustion of a hydrocarbon forms water, H2O, always water. It's not double displacement, so it can't be formation of a solid. We're, we want to balance, so put a two here, and then we have to balance doing this. So now we have two nitrogens, four oxygens on the reactant side, four oxygens, two nitrogens on the reactant side. This is a decomposition reaction. We have driving forces to run through. Two moles of gas on the reactant side, three moles of gas on the product side. So formation of a gas is a driving force. Both elements involved here are in a compound on the reactant side and elemental on the product side. So it is redox. We didn't form water. There's no H2O in the products. It's not a double displacement reaction, so it's not solid. So this is a decomposition where it has two driving forces, formation of a gas, and redox. Okay, last one. We're going to do one more. Combustion of a hydrocarbon. So we can practice balancing. CH and O on the reactants, we have 5, 10, and 2. And the products always 1, 2, 3. Let's first balance carbon. This changes my carbon to 5 and my oxygen to 11. Let's balance hydrogen. We balance hydrogen, this gives us 10, and then 15. This is the case where everybody starts to get confused. And I want to remind you, if you have an odd number on the reactant side or on the product side and an even number on the other side, you want to double the odd. So we're going to double this, double this, 10, 20. And then that gives us 30. So now I go over and I have to put a two here. I also have to double that one because it's one and I doubled it to two. That gives us 10, 20. Now to get 30 oxygens, I put a 15 here. So remember, if you end up with a double or an odd number on one side and even number on the other, double it and go from there. It has the same driving forces as all of the other redox, I mean, combustion reactions we had. So we have 17 moles of gas in the reactants, 20 in the product. So formation of a gas is a driving force. Oxygen by itself on the reactants and in a compound on the products. So redox is a driving force. Combustion of a hydrocarbon always produces carbon dioxide and water. It's not a double displacement. So solid is not a driving force. So this forms a gas. It's redox, and it forms water. There's a summary. So remember, the things that are going to be on this test are different parts of a reaction, balancing equations, reaction types, driving forces, activity series, or single displacement reactions only, 
solubility table for double displacement reactions only. Remember, I highly suggest running through each of the driving forces one by one so you make sure you don't miss any of them. Some of them can have more than one driving force. If there are zero driving force forces, you would write no reaction. Spoiler alert, none of the reactions that are on the test on Friday are going to be no reaction. Those questions are going to be worded a different way. So you will have seven reactions total that you need to balance. Tell me the type of reaction and then tell me the driving force.